Hello everyone. Welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate the simulation of a Type A chopper, also referred to as first quadrant chopper in MATLAB. So let's get started. This is a circuit diagram of a Type A chopper. So one of the most important observations with respect to the name, it is called as first quadrant chopper. So why is it called as first quadrant chopper? So it's very simple because the voltage and current will always be positive throughout the operation of this particular uh, switch. As a result, it is called as a first quadrant operation uh, or first quadrant chopper. So uh, how does uh, uh, how do we say that the voltage and current is always positive? Uh, whenever the switch is on, consequently current flows to the load and current is positive and voltage across it will be positive negative in this convention when the switch is off whatever energy is stored in case you have an inductor then consequently the stored energy will flow through the freewheeling diode so however the current direction will still be remaining the same hence it will still be positive and the output voltage will be zero at that point of time so it will never go to negative so the voltage will be zero or it will be positive and current will always be in the same direction that is from positive to negative as a result v out and i out will be positive throughout the operation and hence it is called as first quadrant chopper. Once the basic understanding of the circuit is understood, we'll get into our uh, simulation in MAT. All right, here we are. So click on Simulink library browser and search for DC voltage over here. Uh, so add this block, DC voltage source. Choose the ones that are there in bla black that is used for power electronic applications. And uh, once this is done, we will be requiring a power give block, which is basically the heart of our circuit. If you don't have this block, then simulation will be throwing you an error while uh, you are simulating this so we need a voltage measurement block we need a current measurement block as well so add them as well uh, once that is done we will be requiring a MOSFET switch so search for MOSFET scroll a little down use this MOSFET over here add this block we will be requiring a diode as well so search for diode uh, and uh, uh, scroll a little down choose the ones that are there in black as I already told you at, at this block once this is also done we will be requiring a series RLC branch search for series RLC and add this block later on we can change it to the type of load that we want uh, we also need a pulse generator block uh, to see uh, to, to generate the pulses for the MOSFET uh, and give it to the gate terminals at this block as well once all of these are added we will be requiring a scope in order to see how the waveform looks like so search for scope and add this block um, I guess we have added all the blocks that are required according to our circuit connection so we can get started off uh, by placing them in appropriate positions and then uh, by entering the parameters with respect to uh, our given values so we will be uh, doing a couple of things here first up we need to uh, disable the measurement port because we're not using them we have to do it for both MOSFET and the diode uh, rotate the diode and make sure it is in this particular direction uh, for freewheeling operation to take place um, for that you can use control R in order to rotate and once this is done we will be connecting it uh, in the form of our circuit connection according to um, uh, the circuit connections we will be connecting it and we will be uh, rotating the load control R so that it looks in a proper way I will be choosing a resistive load or you can also choose an inductive load um, randomly select one value uh, just to show what is the uh, uh, direction in which the current flows and what is uh, the sign of associated with the current and voltage that is the only reason so uh, give the pulse to the gate terminals so double click on the DC voltage source and change the voltage to be equal to 24 volt double click on the pulse generator block and uh, change its amplitude uh, say equal to 10 just for us to see how the amplitude looks like this doesn't matter uh, for us to properly see in case you want to see the gate pulses this will be applicable uh, time period I'll be choosing 0 0.02 seconds very simple uh, frequency if you're considering it to be equal to 50 hertz for one cycle 1 by 50 is 0.02 for 360 degree that is the reason 0.02 um, nevertheless if you change this also doesn't matter just for having a clear uh, visual indication of how the waveform looks like I'll be using this choose the pulse width to be equal to um, say 65% uh, slightly greater 65% of the time it is on and the remaining 35% of the time it is off. I'm not giving any phase delay. Click on OK. So we have entered all the parameters according to our requirement. I'll be connecting a voltmeter at this point uh, between uh, ac across the load, which is basically a resistor that is used and uh, negative with respect to the other end of the resistor. Give it to the scope. Uh, connect the ammeter as well over here in this particular fashion. Uh, you can also connect uh, the pulse generator block to see how the pulses are generated. Uh, set the simulation time to one second 
because these are static loads uh, so now we can uh, click on run and uh, check the output waveform by double clicking on the scope so double click on the scope in order to see the waveform all right now we will be categorically separating these waveforms such that we will be able to see them clearly and individually so uh, use the one that is given there and once that is done over here uh, if you see this is the voltage waveform this is the current waveform these are the pulses which is given to be equal to 10 volt uh, so we will be zooming a particular portion uh, so that we can clearly see the waveforms if you carefully observe the voltage is either positive or it is equal to zero so when the switch doesn't conduct over here in this region the voltage across this point as I already told you at this point uh, the, the diode will be conducting freewheeling operation at that time what happens the voltage will be uh, zero uh, because it is a short circuit at this point so based on that we will be saying that uh, so or in other words when there is uh, uh, when the MOSFET is not conducting the switch will be open and consequently there will be no voltage appearing across the load terminals so this is the way we will be saying current is positive or it is equal to zero at some portion of time since we are using a resistive load it is zero uh, there is no freewheeling action taking place and similarly these are the pulses that so that's it for today in case you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates uh, if you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching this video Please do keep supporting. Thank